You guys seem to love my video essays on the Harry Potter films. I originally thought I would do two videos, whether it would be the worst and the best, but I thought to myself that I would continue doing the rest of them. But anyways, I'm doing every video essay on each Harry Potter film, and I did one on the Half-Blood Prince, explaining why it's a better movie. I did one on the Prisoner of Azkaban, explaining why it's my favorite. And I did one on the Order of the Phoenix, explaining why it's my least favorite. And after I finish uploading my Order of the Phoenix video essay, a lot of people agree with me saying that The Prisoner of Azkaban is the best film. And ironically, it is one of my favorite out of the eight movies. But I got so many comments saying that The Order of the Phoenix is their favorite film, and said it's the least favorite book. And to be honest, it shocked me because there are a lot of Harry Potter fans that have many different opinions on each of these films. And I also got a comment saying that the least favorite movie was The Half-Blood Prince and The Goblet of Fire. I already did my Half-Blood Prince video essay, and the reason why I title it a better film is because that I have so much respect for this film, ironically. And The Half-Blood Prince is by far one of my favorite book in the series. And the film version of Half-Blood Prince is being up there for me, being my third favorite. But when I saw the comment on The Goblet of Fire, people said it's their favorite book, but their least favorite. So I decided to do a video essay on The Goblet of Fire. I do like the fourth movie, but I do have so much respect for this film as I would have done with many others in the series. So I'm going to explain why it's a respectful movie for me. Now let's get started. I do have many problems with this film, like the fact that they completely skipped over the Quidditch World Cup scene. It was an exciting thing to see in the books, and we in terms of readers would have loved to see it in the movie, and just were about to see this exciting match. Bam! It just get rid of it and just cuts to the next scene. Or having the Death Eaters robes look more similar to the Ku Klux Klan, aka the KKK. Their looks bothered me, but I was glad that their appearances changed in the Order of the Phoenix, as their robes would be more different and have more different masks in this film. And some other things that bothered me is the way that Barty Crouch Jr. cast the Dark Mark right after the Death Eaters attack, rather than casting the Dark Mark to scare the Death Eaters away. And some other things that bothered me too was the fact that Dumbledore mispronounced the name of the Wizarding Schools. The lovely ladies of the Bow Batons Academy of Magic! In the book, the name was actually Bobatons. I can see why the film messed that up. Some other examples involve this too, like cutting so many serious black scenes. We only get a small cameo of him because he's being etched in the fire. I found this a little disappointing because I would have loved to see more Gary Oldman in the series. And most of all, the fact that they completely got Dumbledore ruined in this film. I'm pretty sure you'll agree with me. There's the infamous Dumbledore said calmly scene, which pretty much got a lot of views on YouTube. Did you put your name into the Goblet of Fire, Harry? Dumbledore asked calmly. Uh, Harry, I protest! Because oh, every season, he's always screaming and always yelling. Silence! That doesn't help, Alistair. Attention! See, Harry, I've searched and searched for something. Some small detail. Every time I get close to an answer, it slips away. It's maddening. And all of these things were the complete opposite of how Dumbledore was in the books. And then... Dumbledore cleared his throat and read out, Harry Potter. Harry Potter! I have given evidence already on this matter, he said calmly. Severus Snape was indeed a Death Eater. I have given evidence on this matter. Severus Snape was indeed a Death Eater. And prior to Lord Voldemort's downfall, turned spy for us at great personal it's risk. Today he's no more a Death Severus Eater than I am. Dumbledore in the films was not the Dumbledore from the books. In the books, Dumbledore is pretty much calm, and he rarely raises his voice. The only time he did raise his voice in the Goblet of Fire, however, was when he rushed in to save Harry from Barry Crouch Jr. Here's the line that pretty much dedicates to how this point turns out. At that moment, Harry fully understood for the first time why people said that Dumbledore was the only wizard Voldemort had ever feared. The look upon Dumbledore's face as he stared down at the unconscious form of Mad-Eye Moody was more terrible than Harry could ever imagined. There was no benign smile upon Dumbledore's face. No twinkle in the eyes behind the spectacles. There was cold fear in every line of the ancient face. A sense of power radiated from Dumbledore as though he were giving off burning heat. This to me by far is one of my favorite parts in the Goblet of Fire book. And it's a shame really that they portrayed Dumbledore like this. So if only they had Dumbledore be calm throughout the rest of the film, the way he was supposed to be, the scene in the film would have been much more perfect. Also, him grabbing Harry's arm to match Barty Crouch Jr.'s dark mark in the film was pretty out of character. Your arm, Harry. 
He literally hurts Harry. And I feel like this is something that Dumbledore from the books would never do. As I said, I don't dislike this film. And the reason why is because I have so much respect for this film. But I'm not here to discuss why I dislike it. I'm discussing why this movie deserves so much respect. Probably more than the other films in the series. The man that directed this film is Mike Newell. This was the only first and last film in the series he directed. I honestly think he's a great director. And I did mention that Dan Radcliffe said that he was a loud and passionate man during the reunion. But if I were part of the cast member, I would not be a huge fan of this person. And to be honest, I would agree. But for me personally, I don't think he really did took so much blame for this film. It is clear that he never read any of the books before taking the job, nor even watching the first 30 to 40 minutes of Alfonso's movie to get a taste of what the darkness is. With this being settled, he competes to other directors, like Chris Columbus as well, and plans to make the movie super dark and groundbreaking. Not only that he did, he decided to make the main focus be the opposite and focused on comedy, which is not a bad thing, because it is fine if the movie can throw in some comedy. He also thinks this film as more like a Bollywood film or a Hitchcock thriller, which when looking at the book is pretty accurate. This book is by far one of the mystery thrillers in this one. One of the strongest parts in the Goblet of Fire book is the mystery aspects in this. There are many examples of those things, like who put Harry's name in the Goblet of Fire? Who cast the Dark Mark? Who are the Weasley twins blackmailing? What happened to Bertha Jorkins? Did Barty Crouch Jr. really commit the crime? And the very first question at the beginning of the chapter was, who murdered the Riddle family? And those were one of the main reasons why this book is pretty much every Harry Potter fan's favorite book. It is quite impossible that the film had to cut all those things. Because of this, Mike Newell suggested that he wanted to split this movie into two parts, but just stuck to one part. And if you look at other films in the series too, specifically The Order of the Phoenix, this book is by far the longest, and the film is the shortest. And they also cut many things that the book was really important, like Ron and Hermione becoming prefects, Quidditch, and all that other type of stuff. The Hapla Prince film cut so much many parts of Voldemort's memories and kept all the relationship aspects. And when looking at the fourth and the fifth film, both films could have easily been split into two parts, but just left out so many things that were important to the book. And both books are the longest, and is by far pretty much one of the big plot holes in the entire series. Anyway, Mike Newell decided to add some things that were not in the book and pretty much make every questions pop up, most notably the first task. I feel like you'll agree with me on this one too. Because the first few minutes in the film, the first task was pretty much perfect. We see Harry in real danger. The dragon breathing fire, nearly missing Harry. And Harry calling out to his broom. And right there is where he should have gotten the egg. Because not only that, we would have had time for more mystery aspects. And mention of the Barty Crouch scene. But we get this long dragged out chase scene. And not only that, we see the dragon literally destroying the school and Harry almost dying like several times and everyone sat in the arena doing nothing. And did this dragon just fall to its death? Who was to clean that up? And if it's not dead, I'm pretty sure that this dragon might have set loose free in the castle and could enter Muggle territory. Now with every flaw that I've discussed, one of the things that this film was pretty much everyone's least favorite is the way that this movie never involved Harry and the rest of the characters getting their haircuts. To be honest, I don't have a problem with Harry, Ron, Fred and George, or Neville not getting their haircuts in this film. But to be clear, people just judge on the film by judging on what the characters look be like. If you look at the Prisoner of Azkaban movie, you know that Harry's hair matches the same thing like in the book, which pretty much defines why it turns out to be my favorite. And in The Order of the Phoenix, people like this film because Harry and the rest of the characters finally got their haircuts. But ironically, this movie pretty much has to be much more respectful by not judging on the haircuts or anything else possible. Overall, I do like the Goblet of Fire movie, but I still have problems with it right there and there. And I hate some of the decisions that they made. Hopefully you guys enjoy on why this movie deserves so much respect, as I have so much respect for many of the films in the series.